Greg was just telling us before about the option of maintaining or retaining your current home when you're looking to upgrade. Um, you're the money man. Tell yes. us, how's that possible? Obviously, if you win the lotto, maybe it's easy, but for <laughs> most of us normal humans out there, how do you sort of do that? And, and what are some of the options that people have got? And or how do they work out if it is even practical for them? Yeah, well, I think the first thing is most people actually don't know whether they can retain their um, existing property when they're looking at upgrading and irrespective of the reasons for the upgrade. But the first thing that you'd want to do is actually approach a broker like ourselves. Um, what we would do is actually start with a servicing um, capacity um, uh, test that we would do. And probably within the space of about five minutes, assuming that all the information that you've provided us is relatively accurate, Yep. What we would then be able to do is determine whether you can actually afford to, make, to maintain and hold on to that particular property. Because what a lot of people forget is when you're transitioning from your existing principal place of residence into the upgraded home, you're actually going to put your, sorry, your existing property up for rent. So you've got the rental income that comes into play as well. And a lot of people discount that fact and aren't even aware that you can actually utilise that as yeah. you know, serviceability, income for servicing. And so when we talk about serviceability for some people on the line that are unsure what you mean by that, you're obviously talking about, you know, how much money is coming in versus how much money is going out. Absolutely. And in simple mathematics, we want more in and less out. That's how simple it is. In some bank serviceability calculators, as long as you have more than $1 or $1 and above in terms of income over and above your expenses, that means you pretty much qualify. Now, my wife must know that because she has a, an uncanny knack of whatever money's in the bank account, just come to payday, she gets it down to $1. I think that's so is quite that something that all the women out there know? Or yeah, something? you're probably not alone in that regard too. Okay. I think my wife does the same as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's all right. I can still get a loan because Absolutely. as long as it's $1. As long as she's maintaining $1 um, of excess funds, then you'll be fine. Okay, good. Now, what about if I've jumped the gun yes. and I thought that I could afford to maintain my current home yes. and I've gone and brought a new home, Yes. what are some of my options to get through this, this period? You know, how, how can I perhaps do it without losing more hair, without sort of losing my sleep yeah. or, you know, in the worst case, losing one of the properties? Well, that's a great question too, because that, that does happen a lot more than what you'd actually believe from that point of view. So most banks out there, they have a facility called a bridging facility. Yep. Um, and in the event that you've actually acquired a new property, because it is a property that you desperately want, you have the ability to actually furnish the deposit because you've got some savings. But then all of a sudden you approach your bank to maintain or to retain your existing principal place of residence and servicing isn't evident. What we do is we put you into what's called a bridging facility. And that basically is a short term loan for a period of about six months to give you the time to actually put the property on the market, sell the property, and then depending on the settlement terms, usually that six month period is enough. Okay, so that's sort of um, when you basically can't afford, as far as the banks are concerned, yeah. to have both loans, both properties, Yes. but they'll give you effectively a bridging loan, which is that temporary loan for that period to get you through so you can- Absolutely correct. Okay. They're absolutely and, correct. And you know, when we talk about a bridging loan, is it, more expensive? Is it, you know, how does it sort of compare? Bri bridging, people? Yeah, bridging loans are a little bit more expensive um, from a rate perspective. And you're probably looking at, um, you know, if you're able to get a variable rate at the moment of let's say 2.2%, you're probably looking at about a loading of about 2% on top of that. So that's about 4.2% that you'll be paying or thereabouts. But keeping in mind, I mean, it is only a short term facility yeah. and it serves a very, very good purpose because what it actually does, it protects your deposit. So if you've gone out and purchased a property for a million dollars and you paid a hundred thousand dollar deposit, you'd be more than happy to pay that additional interest rate, which is really quite minimal, yep. to preserve your hundred thousand dollar deposit. And I guess in some circumstances, you know, all too often people pick up the phone and call us with only a week or two to go before they've yes. got to settle. Yeah. You know, there's no reason they couldn't take out a bridging loan, and then with our expertise or or you know any broker's expertise, hopefully. Yes find the right product or the right bank that may be able to refinance For one sure. of those properties and, and they yeah. can retain them both. Yeah, and product selection is probably one of the most important things at the moment as well. I mean, as brokers, from a compliance perspective, we always have to meet the client's requirements and objectives. And you know, that, that's something that we go into in a lot of detail and making sure that whatever product we're actually putting the client into, it meets their uh, requirements and objectives. And you don't have to be refinancing every 12 months or two years because you've actually got yourself into the wrong product. You know, the good news is there's no compliance officer here. You don't have to <laughs> get to there. But look, I think, um, you know, it might be interesting for everyone out there since you, you touched on it. What are sort of, um, you know, the different types of products? Because I know 
you know, we talk about having 28 banks on our panel. We talk about yeah. every bank having four, five, six, 20 different loan types. Yeah. What are traditionally the different types of loans? I guess we've talked about a bridging loan. Yeah. But what, is, what are some of the different products that, you know, whether people are upgrading or not, yeah. that they could sort of consider or they should at least understand that if the bank is sort of offering them something that there are alternatives and why Without they might doubt. go. Yeah. And what I find too, what, what a lot of clients do is they hear these fancy terms like 100% offset, um, it's got redraw facilities and, and whatnot. But what, what we find is that probably eight out of 10 people don't actually even use the products that are available within that particular loan that they've taken out, like offset. Offset is incredibly, incredibly valuable if you do have a good amount of savings in there as well. But you know, people are out there not knowing that they can get a much cheaper rate, which is pretty much fee-free, totally fee-free, but it's called a basic loan. So it doesn't come with 100% offset. Yep. It may not have redraw to the full capacity. It's just a basic loan, but it suits their needs. And a lot of people are out there paying high rates, paying a professional package fee of 395 every single year, um, you know, a ten dollar monthly fee, getting a slightly cheaper rate, where they could be going and getting a basic home loan. So you you got your basic home loans, you got your variable um, rate home loans, you got your fixed rate home loans. That's a very very big thing at the moment. Yeah. You know, clients are asking us, and you you know you, you hear us on the phone time and time again. Should I fix my rate? And the difference between the two is a fixed rate. It just locks in certainty of your repayments for that period of for that fixed period that you take out. And Hopefully, there's no bankers on the line today. Yes. <clears throat> you know, one of the reasons for going to a broker is I can imagine the banks are driven not so much by the customer, although, you know, they claim that they are. Yeah. So they're probably going to push you towards these products you talked about with annual fees, with credit cards, with all these features. All the features, absolutely. If you use it, yeah. great. It's fantastic. But often it's a little bit like the iPhone. How many features have we got? And, exactly you know, right. I use the phone, I use SMS. And I use my camera. That's about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And um, I'll, I'll say one thing really quickly when it comes to professional packages. The, the, um, the incentive... They sound good, though. I like the idea of saying I'm Absolutely a professional. Not. The incentive is, is that you, know, you have to pay a package fee. You get a discounted rate. Um, you sound like you're a premium um, customer to the bank. But what a lot of people don't realise... You are a premium, comes, just <laughs> paying them. It comes with a credit card. Yep. It comes with a credit card. You cannot go into a professional package and say, I don't want the credit card. And some of them actually start with a limit of $7,000. If you have a look at the statistics, 92% of Australians will activate that card because you have to activate it. And within the first six months, we'll fully max out that particular card. And the average time that it takes to pay down a credit card, I think is about 16 and a half years. So it's pretty good at 20%. You know what? Sign me up for a basic online. <laughs> Keep it simple. Yes. No features, no nothing. Yes. Um, I like it. Okay, so... Um, maybe before I let you go, there's been a few questions coming through. Uh, you touched on it a little bit before. Yep. Variable versus fixed. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading on Twitter last night. We're talking there's going to be seven interest rate rises before the end of the year. Yeah. We're going to be up two, three, four percent. Everyone's talking that it doesn't matter whether they're just saying a small or a big amount, that rates are going up. Yes. What's sort of the, the strategy or what's the advice to people today? Um, you know, should they be locking in their rate if they've got a current home loan? Should they be going variable, or are there other factors they should look at that are going to yeah. make a bigger difference? To, yeah, well, I think, the, I, the I, think if, if you, I think if you want to create some certainty with your cash flow, what fixed rates do is create that certainty. If um, you know, if clients are nervous about fixing the full rates, what you can actually do because you can do partial variable and partial full. If you've got a half million dollar home loan, you can fix two hundred and fifty of it, where you lock in that certainty of cash flow, and you can leave the other two hundred and fifty at variable. I always say this to clients, if you want to know what the banks believe is going to happen with the variable rate, have a look at what their fixed rates are. So if you have a look at a three-year fixed rate term, mm -hmm. if that's sitting at 2.6% across most banks, that means over the next three years, they believe that the variable rate will not exceed 2.6%. And they're pretty good judges of it, but trust me, they get it wrong more than what they get it right. So, I mean, I think the last time I took out a fixed rate was in the early 2000s which was the last time interest rates were going up yes. and I was happy. And then I finally did it. And I think 2008 interest rates started going down and I've lost. Yes. <laughs> so whilst I've been advising everyone, I guess, in the last 18 months, take out a fixed rate. Yeah. It is one of those things that sometimes you can't quite get it right. So, you know, maybe it's good if yeah. you like that certainty, but if interest rates go down, don't look. Yes. It's the most offensive. important thing. Don't ever you, try you and calculate. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't, that's what you did it for. You did it purely and simply for cash flow certainty, not to hedge against the variable rate and yep. think that whether you're in the money or out of the money, don't ever look at it. 
And you talked about different types of loans. You know, I guess we're thinking about fixing a rate for, for certainty, but for a lot of people thinking I'll save money in the future when rates yes. go up, you know, perhaps they could be better off just re-looking at the home loan because they might be on, as you said, uh, a professional package that they're not using the options. Um, there could be other banks out there that could actually do them a better Absolutely, deal. Absolutely, yeah. And that could save just as much, if not more, Absolutely and give it yeah. to them in their hip pocket today. Yeah, and that is something that probably, when you, when you sit, whether you sit down with us face-to-face or over a Zoom or, you know, we take out a fact, you know, we, we get you to complete a fact finder, it's a 20-minute process for us to actually do all the figures, the calculations, you know, we feed it into a clever calculator from that point of view and just present to you and say, here are all the options, here are your savings. And to get those savings, this is what you're giving up. And it's usually features within a loan product that they don't use anyway. Yep. Okay. Um, now, before I let you go, yes. who's the, uh, the bank or lender of the day? Who's, who's, who are you writing the most business through today? Uh, CBA, Westpac and uh, AFG Home Loans and now a fair bit of ING at the moment too. Okay. So you heard that. He rattled off four of probably 50 different lenders you could do. Yeah. So if you are talking to one of those direct, great. Maybe you are getting a good deal, but I can guarantee you one thing you won't be getting is necessarily the best deal you could. Absolutely. And if you're not talking to one of those four, all the more reason why you should be coming to a broker. Um, so reach out to us if you're not already in touch um, and we can help and you can because I, I guarantee you'll get a better And can I say this in closing rate. too? The amount of banks offering cash back at the moment as an incentive to refinance, as long as it's obviously beneficial for you to refinance, it's $3,000, $4,000 cash backs at the moment, as well as significant rate savings. And at the moment, we're getting rates under 2%. With now, a four thousand dollar cashback, three to four thousand dollars—that's a hell of a lot more than what the government made? handed out yes, last night. So absolutely. I tell you what, stuff the government handouts if you're any tear the budget much, up because yes. you can get three to four grand just by refinancing home loans. Categorically, and I guess as you said, the idea of doing that is to either get uh, additional money out to do a renovation, buy a new car, go on holiday, we can finally travel, or just get a better interest rate. So it's it's a win 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 win. And I challenge people to have a look at your savings account. Not a lot of people that have four thousand dollars sitting in their savings account. And this is real cash. It's a real genuine cash back. It's not a reduction in your home loan by $4,000. It is yep. dollar, if it's a dollar for dollar refinance, it's real genuine cash back in your pocket. Okay, good. Or you could go just put it with your bookie and, uh, and bet on the horses on the weekend like you do. You could. <laughs> <laughs> Don't follow me for any horse tips, trust me. <laughs> All right. Thank you very Fantastic. much. Fantastic. Absolute pleasure. All right. Good to have you back. Yeah. Good to be on the couch again too. That was hopefully great. we'll get you back, you know. Earlier than the next uh, two months. Yes, please do. All right, good. Thank good. you.